Welcome to the first video for 1.3 chemistry, carbon chemistry. In this video, we're going to start by looking at atoms, and then we'll talk about electron shells and how covalent bonding occurs. So first we'll talk about atoms. This is an atom here on the right. You can see it's made up of protons, which are the blue circles, and they are positive. It's also made of neutrons, which you can see in yellow, and they are neutral. You can see that protons and neutrons are in the central circle, which we call the nucleus. And lastly, electrons, which are the red circles, orbit around the nucleus because of the negative charge. So they're attracted to the protons, but they have some sort of force acting on them so that the electrons move around in electron shells or energy levels, which you can see are the rings around the nucleus. An important thing to note with this, for the future, is that electrons are on the outside, so those can be added or taken away, whereas the protons are stuck in the nucleus with the neutrons so they're not able to move. And we'll get back to the idea soon. So we can see the arrows are pointing to different shells which contain the electrons. So this is another image showing the exact same thing. You can see the protons and neutrons are in the yellow nucleus, and the electrons are in rings around the nucleus. You can see the inner shell only has two electrons in it, and the second shell has eight electrons in it. So this is important to note because this is the maximum number of electrons the first and second shell can have. Now we'll look at the periodic table, and we'll look at some elements and discuss what their atoms look like. So we'll start with hydrogen. Hydrogen's mass number is 1, which means the number of neutrons and protons is 1. So hydrogen actually only has one proton, it doesn't have any neutrons. Its atomic number is also 1, so this is the number of protons, like we said before. We know hydrogen must have one electron as well, because it has no net charge on it. So the positive protons, which we know have got one positive, must be balanced by equivalent negative, so one negative. We said electrons are negative, so hydrogen has one electron. You can see its valence electron is up the top, and valence just means outer. So you can see the first shell is its valence electron shell, because it's the outer shell. And remember, we said there can be a maximum of two electrons in the first shell, so this isn't fully stable. In order to be stable, there has to be a full valence electron shell. So hydrogen must have two electrons in its shell for it to be stable. Now we'll look at helium. Helium has a mass number of four, which we said was the number of neutrons and protons. And the atomic number is two. So this is the number of positive protons. Again, helium doesn't have a net charge. So we know that helium must also have two electrons, which you can see up the top here. These are our valence electrons. We also said that the maximum number of electrons in the first shell was two. So helium here is fully stable because its outer or valence energy shell is full. Now we'll look at carbon. Carbon's mass number is 12, which is the number of protons and neutrons. Its atomic number is six, which we know is the number of protons. So we also know that there's gonna be six electrons around carbon's nucleus. We know there's a maximum of two electrons in the first shell, so that's already full. And now we've got four electrons left, which are gonna go into our valence electron shell. So with only four electrons in the second shell, instead of the maximum number of eight, this isn't fully stable. So carbon needs to gain more electrons to make the maximum number of eight electrons in the second shell for it to be stable. Lastly, we'll look at oxygen. Oxygen's mass number is 16 and the atomic number is eight. Now if we try and think about where our electrons will be before we reveal the answer, we know that we've got 8 electrons, and 2 of which must be in the first shell, because we know the maximum number for that is 2 electrons, so that means we've got 6 electrons left. And we know that we can have a maximum of 8 electrons in our second shell, so with only 6 electrons left, we're going to have to put 6 electrons in our outer valence shell. So this is what we've got here. As we predicted, we've got two in the first energy shell, so that's balanced and stable. And we said there was a maximum of eight electrons in the second shell, but we've only got six. So we're going to have to gain two more electrons for this to be fully stable. So now we'll look at how atoms interact. So as we said before, hydrogen has one electron in its valence shell, and carbon has four. So we said that hydrogen needs to gain one electron to be fully stable and carbon needs to gain four electrons. As you can see, the outer rings, or the valence energy shells, are red, so these aren't quite stable yet. This is where covalent bonding comes into it. If we add in hydrogens around the carbon, you can see that the carbon 
now has eight electrons around its second shell. And hydrogen shares carbon's electrons with it, so now it has two electrons around its outside. So since there's eight electrons around the carbon and two around the hydrogen, we can say these are all balanced and stable. This is important to know because covalent bonding is how all hydrocarbons are connected to each other. So this concept is fluid throughout the entire topic. So now we'll look at it a little bit differently. So if this is our carbon with our four valence electrons, and this is our hydrogens, you can see that the hydrogen is going to share its electron with the carbon. So now you can see that the hydrogens each have two electrons, and the carbon has eight electrons. So this is fully stable. This is what we call electrostatic attraction. We know electrons are negatively charged, and because they're sharing electrons, which are like charges, the electrons should repel. This is what we call the electrostatic attraction. So it's the attraction between the valence electrons and the nucleus. So we see in the nucleus there are positive protons, which have orbiting electrons which are negatively charged. So in covalent bonding, we are sharing electrons between different atoms. There is electrostatic attraction due to the charges. This is important to know because they'll often ask you what electrostatic attraction means and how covalent bonding works. So in this video, the key exam question words you should be able to answer now are recognising, naming, drawing and explaining bonding. So we've looked at atoms, we looked at the number of electrons they have, we looked at electron shells, so we see the first shell can have a maximum of two electrons and the second shell can have a maximum of eight electrons. And lastly, we looked at covalent bonding. So we should be able to recognise, name and draw atoms and electron shells and then explain covalent bonding. That's it for this video. It's been a bit of a crash course, getting you up to date for what you need to know for the standard. 